Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. In this video, we are gonna code our very own Markov chain. And I'm gonna show you not one, not two, but three different methods of computing the stationary distribution of our Markov chain. So this is gonna be a video with very high practical importance. I hope you're gonna watch this video till the end. And if you wanna see more videos like this, then please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon because I make videos about machine learning and data science regularly. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, first things first. Let me import the NumPy library because everything that we're gonna do here will be based on this. And here you can see the Markov chain. If you don't know anything about Markov chains, then this is the correct time to pause this video and watch the first video of this series because there I have explained everything you need to know about Markov chains in great detail and I am using the same example that I used in that video so it will be easier for you to follow. So as you can see we have got three states in our Markov chain burger, pizza and hot dog and as you know these states represent the menu of a hypothetical restaurant. The hypothetical restaurant serves only one item per day and you can kind of predict what they are gonna serve tomorrow if you know what they are serving today because there exists a certain relationship and the relationship is shown by these transition arrows and the numbers corresponding to these arrows are called transition probabilities. For example, let's focus on this number 0.3 and this transition arrow from pizza state to burger state. This simply means there's a 30% chance that tomorrow they are gonna serve burger if they are serving pizza today. Now focus on this number, 0.2. There's a 20% chance that tomorrow again it will be a burger day given that today is a burger day. So you get the idea, right? Every state depends on its previous state, which is basically the Markov property. Now I'm gonna encode these states into numbers because it's much easier to work with numbers instead of this pictures and words. So I'm gonna represent burger with 0, pizza with 1 and hot dog with 2. And this piece of code is just declaring a dictionary where the keys are the numbers and the values are the state names. So let me run this cell, okay? So you can see here 0 represents burger, 1 represents pizza and 2 represents hot dog. Let's move on. Okay, so here I have represented every transition probability into a single matrix and the matrix is called transition matrix. How to interpret this matrix? Well, just look at this. The entry in the ith row and jth column represents the transition probability from state i to state j. For example, if you focus on 0.6 here, this belongs to row 0 and column 1. So we should go back to the diagram and look at state 0 and state 1. And you can see here that the transition probability from state 0 to state 1 is 0.6. I hope this matrix makes sense now. Okay, so let's just quickly assign this matrix to a variable. So I'm naming this variable a here and I have just assigned the numpy 2d matrix. So let's just run this. There we go. Okay, so the basics are done. Now we're gonna simulate a random walk on our Markov chain. So what is a random walk? This simply means we start with an arbitrary state and then we move along our Markov chain following the transition probabilities. Now what do I mean by following the transition probabilities? Well, let me just go back to the diagram. Suppose we are starting with this hot dog state. If we follow the transition probabilities, then 50% of the time we should go to the burger state and the other 50% of the time we should go back to the hot dog state. And there's zero probability to go to the pizza state from hot dog state. So that is what I mean by following the transition probabilities, okay? Now let's see how to implement this. First of all, I am defining the number of steps that we are gonna take. 
So here I'm gonna simulate a random walk with 15 steps, okay? Then we have to decide which state to begin with. Here the start state is zero. At first I am printing the name of this state using the state dictionary, okay? Then I'm defining a variable called previous state and this will be helpful in further coding, okay? For now, we have to assign the start state here. Why? Because we have just visited the start state, okay? Now, we need to continue this loop for 14 times. Why? Because the first step is already done. So inside the while loop, first of all, we need to decide which state it's gonna go next. And to do this, by following the transition probability, we need to use a function called random.choice. So I'm passing two arguments in this function. The first argument is just the list of states. And in our case, we have got three states, 0, 1 and 2. And in the second argument, we need to pass the probabilities of going to these three states from our previous state. And how to do that? Well, we can get this from our transition matrix. Basically, we are fetching the row corresponding to the previous state from our matrix A. And that's how we are passing the probabilities. And this function will just pick one of these elements following this particular probability distribution, okay? Now, as we have got our current state, I'm just printing the name of the current state using the state dictionary. And after that, we need to assign the current state to the previous state because we need to iterate it, right? And at last, don't forget to decrease the value of n, otherwise it will just go to an infinite loop. And after the loop execution is done, I'm just printing a stop just to give it a nice look. So let me just run this. And voila, first we are starting with a burger state, then our simulation has produced a burger state again, then hot dog, then burger, then pizza, hot dog, and so on. Let me just try with a different initial state. So I'm gonna put two here. Let's see what comes now. This time, obviously it's gonna start with the hot dog state because we have put the state two, and then it has gone to burger, then pizza, hot dog, hot dog, and etc. Okay, so now you know how to simulate a random walk on a Markov chain. Now comes the most interesting portion. How to find the stationary distribution of our Markov chain. And the first method that I'm gonna show you is called the Monte Carlo method. In my first video, I mentioned that I wrote a Python script to simulate a random walk on the Markov chain to find the stationary distribution as the number of steps increases to infinity. And this is the code for that. Well, the logic is to simulate a random walk with a very high number of steps and count the number of times each state is appearing in our random walk. And if we divide the state frequencies with the number of steps, we just get the stationary probabilities. Now obviously this method works if the number of steps is huge because you know according to the law of large numbers as we do an experiment many times eventually the answer will converge to the expected values and for a Markov chain the stationary distribution is nothing but the expected probabilities of the given states. So here I'm gonna simulate a random walk with 1 million steps. Now we need to start with some state, right? Let's start with zero. And then I'm declaring a variable called pi. And this variable will store the stationary distribution. At first, I am initializing the stationary probabilities corresponding to every state as zero. Now, once we have made our first step, the count corresponding to that state should become one, right? And then as usual, I'm defining a variable called previous state and I'm assigning the starting state to it. Then comes our loop. And the logic of the loop is exactly same as the previous one. Here I have just taken an extra variable i and I'm increasing the value of it. 
and the loop stops when i hits 1 million okay please notice that when we are arriving at the current state we have to increase the frequency of that state by 1 so after the loop execution is done we just need to divide the frequencies with the total number of steps to get the probabilities let me run this now this will take a little bit of time because i am doing it for 1 million times so it says that the stationary probability for the burger state is about 0.35 for pizza about 0.21 and for hot dog about 0.44 now one thing to be very clear if you decrease the number of steps the accuracy will decrease and if you increase the number of steps the accuracy will increase so let me just do it for 100,000 steps and see here the accuracy has decreased. I would highly recommend you to try this with 10 million steps. Okay, so now comes the second approach, which is by doing repeated matrix multiplication. Well, I explained the logic behind this technique in the third video of this series that is appearing in the screen right now. So if you don't know the logic behind this, please go and watch that video. I promise it's a great video. Well, the method is very simple here. You just need to multiply the matrix A with itself many, many times. And as you move toward infinity, all the rows of your matrix will converge to the stationary distribution. Well, here I'm going to multiply the matrix with itself thousand times. First, let me just initialize a new variable A n with the matrix A. Then we are going to perform a while loop and inside this loop, I'm just going to multiply the matrix A with itself and I'm going to store the result into A n. So once the loop execution is done, we are going to print the value of A to the power n. And to get the value of stationary distribution pi, we just need to take any one of these rows. So let me just run it. And just look at that. How nicely every single row converged to the stationary distribution. And did you notice something interesting? Yeah, this approach converges quicker than the approach one. So this is a better method of finding the stationary distribution. Now comes the third and the best approach. Drum rolls, please. Yeah, the technique of finding left eigenvectors. I have already explained in my first video why the left eigenvectors with eigenvalue one gives the stationary distribution. So how to find it? Well, here I'm going to take the help of scipy library. More specifically, we're going to use the linear algebra module. So this eig function is doing the thing. Okay. We just need to pass our transition matrix A and I have given right as false because we don't need the right eigenvectors. We are only concerned about the left eigenvectors. So that is true. And this function will return two things. The first item contains the eigenvalues and the second item contains the eigenvectors. So let me just print them. These are all the left eigenvectors. How to read this? Well, the vectors are actually represented with the columns. So this column represents one vector, this one another, and this one another and if you notice carefully only this eigenvector is real and all the other ones contain complex numbers and you can see that only the first eigenvalue is real and all the other ones are imaginary moreover the real value is one and that is the one we are looking for at this moment some of you might be thinking well you told us that the left eigenvector with the eigenvalue 1 gives the stationary distribution. But here, all the entries in the left eigenvector are negative. So how can it possibly represent the stationary distribution? Well, I mentioned there exists another condition that our stationary distribution should fulfill. And that is all the numbers in the vector pi should add up to 1. And this is quite obvious, right? Because to represent a probability distribution, the sum of the probabilities 
should be one, but how to get that one from these negative values? Well, the answer is simpler than you might think. Well, I'm just normalizing this left eigenvector. And the way to do this is very simple. You just need to divide each element with the sum of all the elements. And here you need to convert the number into a real number because here everything is represented in complex format, okay? So after the normalization, I am assigning the value to a variable called pi normalized. So let's just run this and just look at that, how accurate our results are. Okay, so at last, I'm gonna show you some bonus content. How about computing the probability corresponding to a particular sequence? Suppose we wanna find what is the probability that our Markov chain will produce this particular sequence. The walk starts with the pizza state, then it goes to hot dog, then hot dog again, then burger. We can represent it like this. And by following the Markov property, we can write this. And here's the code. Well, it's actually very simple. So I have defined a function here called find prob. It takes the sequence, the transition matrix and the stationary distribution. So at the start state, we are assigning the first state of our random walk. Then the probability variable actually stores the result. So we are initializing prob with the probability of the first state and it has to come from pi vector, right? Then a variable called previous state, it will be helpful in our loop. Now we are iterating for the remaining steps in the sequence. And at first we are assigning the current state and then we are multiplying the transition probability from the previous state to the current state with the current value of prob. So that's how we are computing the long multiplication here, okay? And at last, obviously, we need to assign the current state to the previous state. Now, at this point, obviously, the prob variable contains the result of the big multiplication. So let's just take this random walk and pass it into our find prob function. And let's see what comes out. And it turns out to be 0 0.037 approximately. So now you know how to simulate a Markov chain, how to find the stationary distribution using three different methods and how to compute a probability corresponding to a specific random walk. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share this video and subscribe to my channel. Stay safe and thanks for watching. Thank you.